incremental design is when you're building something more complicated, you're going to build it step by step, or you're going to build it in increments. Now, something that pretty much everybody in computer science struggles with at some point is how big should your step be, and where should the step go? And this I idea of kind of planning and thinking is called the design process. Now, it usually involves actually not just planning, but actually creating uh, as you go. A lot of times you're going to, right inside the public static void main, you're going to just start putting some code in and running it. And so that's this step right here, first step, just put some code in your main method. Uh, and then once it's tested and running, uh, then you're going to wrap in a new method and test again. And sometimes you're going to put literal values, like just numerical values in. You see in this example that we're going to use the number 6. And then later on, you replace these values with variables and parameters. So we're going to do that process now. Let's go ahead and take this line of code, these few lines of code, paste them in here. I'll shift F to format, F6 to run. All right, what does this do? It's going to print out. Uh, with some spaces in, uh, let's see, two times i, where i is the uh, index value. Uh, so you know that i like to start my i at zero. Uh, thank you very much. So, and we'll stop it at less than six. All right, there we go. So these are just multiples of two. Okay, so. We're going to call this now, this whole thing, print row. Um, I'm very tempted to call it print even, but let's call it print row. Uh, there's two, there's, well, there's two ways I like to make methods. Everything is still public static. Uh, this is a void because you're not going to return anything. So print row. All right, so that's one way to create a method, and then you can just drag everything down here. And just alt shift down a couple times. So just move all your code in there. There's a second way to create a method. Just pretend it exists. Of course it doesn't. So you're going to get an error. And you click on, come on, there we go. Create new method, print row. Now just to warn you, this will create private. I'm not worried about public and private yet. Very soon we will be. Uh, and it'll put an extra line of code in. Uh, so if you actually run it, you'll see somewhere up here, unsupported operation exception. Where did that come from? It came from right here, uh, this line of code. So we'll delete all this stuff. And now we'll drag in code. Okay, run it. Hey, nothing happened. Oh, that could be bad. I didn't intentionally that line of code in there. Actually, I do want that line of code, but not there. All right, so why did this do nothing? Well, what does our public ma public static void main say to do? There's no code in here, so nothing. They're very easy. Uh, now, we'll do one thing, which is called the print row method, and we'll run that. Okay, uh, let's duplicate this a couple times, run it again. All right, very exciting. We did it three times in a row. Uh, now, maybe we want to print uh, rows that are different lengths. So we don't always want to go to six. Uh, let's give this a smart name. Um, N. All right. Let's, let's call it a uh, numbers about as useful as N. Now, if I try to run it, print row, well, you need to put an integer value in here, and it will probably say that right here in the error. It says method print row, blah, 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 Re required an int, found no argument. All right, so we'll do 8 and run it. There we go. And I recommend you test this a couple times. 18, uh, get crazy, 0, uh, maybe 1. a little too far for my screen here. 12. Good enough. All right, right there. Okay.
Now, if you want, this might be a little nicer. So zero. Well, I don't know. It depends on how you want this to run. I'll leave it like that. All right. What if we want to print rows of rows? Okay. So I'm going to basically put these into some type of a, a for loop. Or I see. All right. We're going to do something a little different than the book does. For int. I'm going to use J. So let's grab one of these print rows and we're going to print row J. All right, let's run this. So look at that. We get this nice little triangle right there. So it's going to print row zero, which actually gives us nothing on that first line. So let's start J at one equal. All right, there we go. We're making a different uh, pattern than you're seeing in the book and that's totally fine. All right, so what are we going to do next? Well, Maybe we want to make these triangles over and over again. Let's see, they have a height of five numbers and a width of five numbers. Now what we're going to do is wrap this in another method. Uh, you can follow along with the table they're going to print. Oh, look at that. They're copying my idea right there, except they're uh, changing the multiples. All right, excellent. I'm used to copying their idea. Okay. So I want to take this right here and I want to make a method for it. All right, so it's going to be called print triangle. And of course we don't have a print triangle method. So alt enter shows hints, create method and grab that. Alt shift down a bunch of times and right there, delete that extra line of code. All right, so we got print triangle. It's going to run five times, and uh, that's all we're going to do here. Zoom out a little bit, and let's run this. Get crazy and run it with debug. Come on. Oh, toggle. Wow, it took me a long time to find. All right, so we're going to run this. Print triangle first, and then we're going to go step into. We're going to go down here to print triangle. It's going to run the for loop. And then print row, step into. So now it's going up here, print row. It's going to loop around here a bunch of times, and then it's going to come back down to here. And it's going to keep going and going and going until it finishes everything. All right, and we get this nice triangle that we were expecting. So it'd be nice maybe to get, instead of always being five, we'll go size. Uh, but now we have a problem because right up here, uh, we have to give this a size. Now it could be boring and put five in. Uh, let's get that breakpoint out of here. Now it's be red in my code. All right, let's run this now. All right, not very exciting. Well, let's do seven. There we go. So now you're seeing this triangle get bigger whatever size you want. Uh, let's do one. I think zero is going to be boring. I think it's going to run anything at all. Yep. Uh, we could even do 100. Uh, with word wrap, it's going to look horrible. But I can zoom that way out. That's as far out as I can zoom it. But you get the idea. You can see the triangle forming right there. All right. And that is the basics of how to break your problem into smaller pieces and then create methods. I definitely could have put this into a single method with a for loop inside of a for loop, uh, but this kind of pulls it apart nicely right here.